Today I'm doing a transmission service on a 2010 Toyota Tacoma with the V6 and the five-speed automatic. Uh, should be the same transmission in all of them. It's a five-speed automatic. Um, I'm just going to be doing a drain and a refill, which gets about a third of the fluid. Toyota recommends this service every 60,000 miles. It takes about a gallon of fluid and it's a fairly easy process to do. So I'm gonna show you how to do it and uh, hopefully this will help you address it in your driveway or wherever else. So here we are underneath. This is the back of the vehicle and here's the passenger side, the right side. We're gonna uh, kind of go backwards in order with the plugs here. Uh, and this is the best way to take them out so that if you have a problem with a plug, you know that before you drain all the fluid out. So we're gonna start with a fill plug, which is right up here. That's 24 millimeter. So I've got my half inch ratchet and that was not particularly tight. Okay, so we've got the fill plug out of the way. Next, we're gonna move on to the fill level check plug. This is the plug we're gonna take out to set the level when we're wrapping it up. Uh, and this is a five millimeter hex. And I cleaned this out with a pick. It was kind of corroded in there. So, um, so I scraped it out so that the, the bit fit in there nice. You can kind of just yank on it and give it a good pop. These usually aren't, uh, they don't fight you on the way out, but there is a kind of pop to free it. And we'll see probably a little bit of fluid coming out of it. And then next, I'm gonna move on to the drain plug, which is this one right here, and that's a 14 millimeter. And this should be very similar. We'll try and give it a pop and start it going. And there we go with that one. So this fluid, uh, let's see if I can do this without blocking the light. Well, you can see it all over my hand. Uh, this is not dirty, uh, scary dirty or anything like that, but it also doesn't look brand new. So, uh, so it looks like we're about on par for when this should be done. So we're just down to a dribble here. So I'm gonna start reinstalling stuff. Now I just wanna clarify, you don't actually have to pull out the fill check when you drain it but I'm pulling it out to make sure that I'm not gonna have a problem pulling it out. All of the fluid will come out the drain. This basically has a tube that goes up in there and that's at the top of where the level should be. But we don't wanna find out later that we can't get that off of there. So. Got a new crush washer to install on this plug and we're not gonna torque this down yet. We're just gonna hand tighten it cause that's gonna be coming off later. Um, and I kind of go back and forth on crush washers. I'll put a link in the bottom uh, in the description to purchase crush washers. Uh, I have had trouble reusing them on occasion and I have had trouble with new ones occasionally. And I don't know, I'm pretty thorough about cleaning stuff up. Side note, there's no magnet on either one of these. So you wanna wipe the plugs off, but there's no magnet to clean off. But uh, anyways, back to the crush washers. Um, I did put a new one on there. It's kind of hit and miss. Uh, I really don't necessarily recommend one way or the other, um, but it's not bad. I usually have a fair number of crush washers around because I do a lot of transmission services. So uh, the other thing worth mentioning is that a lot of people uh, question, I've got quite a few transmission service videos, and there's a lot of people that question um, the what method to use. Uh, in this case, I did not capture what I drained out and measure it to put in the exact same amount. Uh, that's what some people think is the best way to make sure that you've got it correctly filled. I disagree with that because if you don't know if it was correctly filled in the first place, then putting the same amount in is only going to guarantee that it is still incorrectly filled or we just don't know. So really the only way to do this is to go by the book and warm it up to a specific temperature and then uh, pull this plug out and let any excess drain. So that's what we're gonna do. I am way less concerned about possibly wasting even a quart of fluid than, than I am about sending it out with the transmission not filled correctly. So that is why I do it the way I do it. I just drain it out, I do not measure it, and then I put plenty of transmission fluid in. In this case, we're gonna put a gallon in, and then we're gonna pull that plug and we're gonna let it drain to the correct level. Okay reinstalling the drain plug and a crush washer. And that one actually 
could be torqued down at this point. I'm gonna wait because both of these have the same torque spec. So we'll just torque them down at the same time. But uh, we, can, uh, we can tighten this down so that it's not gonna leak. Just put a little bit of pressure on it and that should be good to go. Now I'm gonna use a pump and I'm gonna fill the transmission up through this fill plug that we've already removed. So I am using Valvoline Max Life ATF. Uh, if you look on the back, it meets the Toyota WS spec and that is what Toyota calls out for in this transmission. I also have a little hand pump here. These are what I use probably 90% of the time on a transmission service. I'll put a link in the description. This is a pretty slick, easy way to fill up a transmission. We're gonna just put it in a gallon of fluid and then put the output up through that hole there and we're gonna pump the entire gallon in. All right, we've got that in there. Uh, this is probably all gonna be out of shot, but um, I'm simply gonna pump the whole gallon in. Okay, we've got the whole gallon pumped in there, so we can take the pump out. We'll set that aside, and then we can take our fill plug here, which does have a rubber O-ring on it, so no crush washer on this. And we're gonna reinstall that. Just gonna snug it down for now. We'll torque it later. And now I'm gonna start this thing up and let it warm up. So I hopped in and shifted through the gears, reverse drive down to second. Not sure if it really made a difference going down to second, but then back up into park. Uh, and I've got my scanner plugged in here. I will put a link in the description for this scanner, but it's from Harbor Freight. And so we've got this plugged in. We're gonna go to menu, the menu button right here. And then we're gonna scroll down to service check and hit enter. It's asking if this 2010 Toyota Tacoma is our vehicle. We're gonna say yes. It links up and here we have transmission temperature. So right now it is 71.4. What our target is, is 115 to 130 Fahrenheit or 46 to 56 Celsius. Obviously this is Fahrenheit uh, that's showing up on my scanner here. So we're gonna let this warm up until it hits the bottom of the threshold 115 and then we can go back down underneath and pull out that fill level plug to set the level. Okay, we've hit 115 degrees. I like to start when it's at the bottom of the threshold because then that way we'll be done with it before it hits the top. So uh, we're gonna pull out the level check here. And it wouldn't surprise me if it, if it dumped out a quart of fluid, but we'll see. We don't know. That's why we're following the procedure. Okay, there it goes. So well, that's draining. I'm gonna grab my torque wrench. All right, I've got my torque wrench set to 15 foot pounds. I don't know if you can see that or not, but 15 foot pounds is the spec for both of these, and 29 foot pounds is the spec for the upper one here. Um, in newton meters, uh, the 15 for the two lower ones is gonna be 20 newton meters, and the 29 up top for the fill plug is going to be 39 degrees. So it looks like we're just about done draining our excess fluid, but I'm going to go under here and I'm going to torque this down to 15, which isn't particularly tight, but that's the spec, so you don't want to over tighten it. Then we're going to get our level check plug back in here. And then we're going to get the torque wrench on this one since this is the same spec. Make sure that bit is seated all the way up in there. Alright, there's, there's that. And then we've got it set to 29 now. We're going to see if we can sneak up in here. And not that you won't figure this out, but here is the exhaust. In fact, there's a catalytic converter. So it's going to be extremely hot by the time you're doing this. Okay, we got that tight. 
So, we are all done with everything underneath. Leveled, filled to the correct level. Um, good to go for another 60,000 miles. So now that we've got this thing all done and back on the ground, I just wanted to mention you definitely want to pull that level check plug out with it on level ground. So whether, like in my case, it's up in the air level, or uh, it would be easy enough to sneak a pan under there and probably not even lift the thing up at all in the air. If you're doing this on jack stands and a floor jack, you could lift the front up to do most of the service, but then when it comes time to pull that plug out to drain the excess, you just wanna make sure it's on level ground. So you could do that back on all fours, just reach under there, open up that plug, and you'd be good to go. So that's pretty much what's involved with it. So hopefully that helps you tackle a project like this at home, maybe in your driveway or garage. Thanks for watching.